Hey guys, thanks for tuning in for another episode. Uh, today we're working on a uh, lemur exhibit. Uh, you can see popping over the left side of the screen are all, this is a long video, so these are all of the kind of chapter markers. Um, I will go back and put them in the uh, description of the video at the end so you guys can bounce around. Uh, we're about total about 50 minutes or so on this build. Um, we start off with uh, obviously kind of the terrain formation and things like that here. Um, a lot of this stuff I modeled off of a, uh, a zoo that was at uh, Melbourne, at least uh, some of the props and the kind of these pod things that we'll build later on here. Um, but uh, that was that was a lot of the uh, inspiration for the build. Um, there's a big ruins piece. Of course, this week I kind of named this Lima Ruins um, because I found I really did want kind of uh, some kind of older... You know, uh, ruin. I guess ruins is the is the word, but uh, some type of older uh, ruins placed in the exhibit. So I looked around, and uh, both of these lemurs are from Madagascar, and there aren't a ton of ruins in Madagascar. And I actually started building uh, the ruins I first started with um, were kind of traditional, you know, kind of ruins. I guess the first thing that popped into my head was kind of traditional South American looking ruins. So I got about you know two-thirds of the way done with uh, with building that and uh, that's the way it started forming so I saved that structure it's not in this particular video but I'll get another one I do plan on using it uh, and then uh, curled over to or moved over to the uh, um, a structure that I was able to find in Madagascar which was um, foul point ruins um, or it's actually called Manda uh, it's called Fort Manda and it's out of Madagascar and um, uh, I guess Manda is the uh, Malagasy word for ruins. So the actual translation is Fort Fortress. Um, and it's kind of a half circular structure. It's a set of buildings. And uh, it's about 500 meters from uh, Foul Point, I think is what it's called. I probably am getting the pronunciation wrong, but uh, but that's uh, that's what it is anyway. But uh, So it was these really cool kind of older looking ruins, uh, 19th century ruins. Um, that I found that was out of Madagascar, and I thought it would be really fitting to have it in with these animals, being that they're from Madagascar. So um, this was uh, quite a large, quite a long build, rather. Um, you know, you can see here I'm messing with. I, I really wanted a uh, a walkthrough section, um, and so these are one of the few animals that you can do uh, walkthrough exhibits with, and I just I think that's really cool when you can do that. Um, so I wanted a walkthrough section. I did struggle with it for quite a bit um, in terms of just the pathing entrance, the guest gate being so close to uh, the um, the regular walkway and things like that. So there are some, uh, you, you are going to find some cuts in this video, so I apologize about that. But um, when these things get this long and, and take this much work, uh, there's just, for me anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have some cuts in them. But there's not too many, and I tried to minimize them uh, as best I could. But uh, I did, uh, originally I wanted, um, you can see my markers, I'll kind of lay things out on the ground. I find it helps quite a bit um, with uh, telling me what, or reminding me what, and giving me some general markers of what I want where. Um, and uh, <clears throat> so, um, just laid those things out, and I wanted originally um, a walkthrough gate from one side to the other, all the way through the exhibit. I, and I actually did a version like that, but um, through fighting with the pathing, which I finally figured out one side, and I knew I was going to have to go through it on the other, um, and uh, just dealing with you know water up to the edge. The, the big problem, I think, is where the stairs are in relation to both water and the edge of a cliff. It tends to get really, really picky um, about things. And you can see right here, I have to back this thing up a little bit um, because there's a dent that... I would have to literally tear out the old walkway, fix the dent, put back in the walkway. But um, I did want kind of this uh, kind of sunken um, area, just slightly sunken, until uh, it gets you closer to where the water line was. Um, the piece that I had seen, and I went back and tried to find where the inspiration was, it had this really cool, if you'll see on the, on the, I guess, the inner side of the exhibit here, there's kind of a hill and it kind of slopes down towards the water. Um, I saw a really cool exhibit where that part was kind of open um, and there wasn't much there. And that was kind of one of the main areas, you know, of that particular zoo. That's where lots of the play things were, the, the enrichment items and things like that. This wasn't a, a Planet Zoo zoo, it was an actual zoo. But for the life of me, I could not go back and find anywhere where I found the picture. So I apologize. The pods definitely come from the, the uh, Melbourne Zoo. Um, and I usually try to give those guys props uh, if I can. If I can, I usually try to you know, 
save kind of an idea of where I got the inspirations from. So the pods came from the Melbourne Zoo and this slanted piece where it runs into um, this viewing area, I unfortunately could not go back and find that. I just saved the picture to kind of give myself uh, some ideas to go on. But anyway, um, struggle a little bit with the glass piece. Again, it's the relation to where the path is um, and, uh, and that sort of thing. So um it gets a little bit finicky and then you have to kind of change things up but uh so here we're going then i i put this portion in super speed because uh this particular structure this was um i think when oh yeah when i first started building the pods i was going to use an umbrella that i had already built um but i did i did really want to get these pods in that i saw uh that was uh, part of the, uh, the that melbourne zoo um and they just are kind of like these octagonal type shapes you can see some of my other renditions there in the background and they were just weren't getting uniform enough for me so um, I redid them a couple times but uh, this part you can skip through you can see the notification there it says uh, skip to 1150 uh, to skip the prop build and this is a lot me just trying to get the angles perfect and things like that um, which I did a lot of these I did it also on the um, the Amanda ruins um, where I went on perfect angles and the more I kind of I guess thought about that and uh, was looking at the build the more I realized that you know that these are 19th century ruins um, that were just really old and <laughs> most certainly probably were not uh, mathematically exact so once I kind of relaxed about that I can be a bit of a perfectionist on it and uh, once I relaxed that uh, <laughs> that requirement a little bit and just kind of started doing some things by hand and uh, adding in some things um, then it went a little bit quicker because I was getting quite obsessive about uh, about getting things exact like this structure here anyway um, you guys can skip forward to this part because uh, this is just me tinkering around with trying to get things perfect um, skip to 11:50 and I'll go on to the kind of the next section um, anyway but uh, so so we get through these pods and um, I wanted these as kind of the guest areas. They turned out to be really, really big. Um, they're, they're quite large, probably uh, three times the size of a, you know, a person in the game. So they're quite tall. Um, but they turned out nice. Um, I'm happy with them. I saved them so I could use them for different stuff. I don't know if I ever will, but um, uh, so that's, that's kind of that. This is just me figuring out the angles exactly. Um, but uh, but anyway, so I started messing with the fort and uh, started relaxing that uh, requirement just a tad. Um, I probably will go back and redo it at some point. Um, it turned out great and it looks good, great in the exhibit. Um, th there's just some things that I would like to improve upon uh, on a next go around. So I'll, I'll probably at some point both fix the ruins, publish them separately to the Steam Workshop, and then also uh, update this uh, uh, this exhibit with uh, ruins inside them, obviously, which will give you the new model. But um, this uh, uh, exhibit I did publish to the Steam Workshop, so it's up there. Um, it's unfortunate that, of course, none of the train modifications and things go with uh, the exhibits. And I know that's kind of a drag, so hopefully you guys can figure it out. Because, I, I, like I said, the, the game's finicky in terms of what it what it wants in terms of terrain and with respect to how the water goes and pathing and things like that but hopefully you guys can figure it out um, the exhibit is quite uh, quite large it comes in just about 3,000 meters squared um, much much more than uh, than these creatures actually need but I did want a large um, you know kind of uh, lemur you know I guess refuge type place um, for, to house them um, I knew I wanted the ruins in there and I wanted these pods and I wanted to be able to walk through and uh, the standard lemur exhibit or space requirements are like two or three hundred square meters um, which is just a really really tiny enclosure um, and definitely wouldn't fit all the stuff that I wanted to fit in there so I did grow it quite a bit um, at some point I know obviously that uh, trying to fit things in your zoo that are this large um, you're going to want things shrunken down a little bit so that you can fit everything but uh um, on this particular one, I did want it. Uh, I did want it big. So um, anyway, but uh, so you guys can bounce around. Like I said, I'm going to put the uh, um, chapter markers um, for all of the all of the elements that we're doing, and I tend to bounce around a little bit. So you know, I'll be doing pathing, and then I'll notice that you know I need to change some terrain, or I want to you know elevate something, and so I kind of change it so it it does 
there's a couple markers you know i think foliage we did two or three times plus i do some final touch-ups um, because you start to notice things you know you get deeper into the build and things like that um, i did have a catastrophic crash um, the game crashed on me when i was building the climbable structure and uh, so that was a drag because it was a couple two or three hours worth of work down the drain um, it did uh, recover a portion of it some of it i had to redo but uh, i did end up leaving the video for the first one the first version in there but um, uh, on the steam on the uh, steam file uh, the works on the workshop the blueprint actually has the second version um, of the climbable structure which is probably not as elaborate as the first one but it's it's pretty close um, so anyway, so there's this really cool, like I said, this is, uh, this is a large pod walkthrough for, uh, for the guests leading to this kind of floating, uh, viewing area out here that's actually inside the exhibit, uh, which turned out really good. Um, I do, I do like this, uh, the umbrella I just had, but, um, I wanted something a little bit different. I wanted it to match closer to, I didn't want to introduce a new element. I didn't want to all of a sudden add bamboo. So, um, this exhibit is great. Uh, I house both uh, ring-tailed lemurs and the red lemurs in it. Works great for both. Sorry, I need water. Um, <clears throat> and sort of a, uh, you know, so uh, both of them come in here. There's a lot of enrichment items. There's plenty of space. Um, and there's even though there's a lot of viewing areas for this particular exhibit, being as big as it is, um, there's, there's so much foliage and there's so many nooks and crannies that these, at least they haven't yet. Not, I, none of the animals yet have complained about privacy. I know on, in some cases, and that's another reason I like to build them, you know, kind of large because if you build them small, then it, it happened to my Chinese pangolins. You know, I stuck to kind of the guide and went slightly over, but you know, then it gets so crowded with people and they're so close, especially, I guess, more so on the walkthrough exhibits, although it kind of happens with my bears as well. Um, that, uh, you know, they end up with privacy issues because, you know, the exhibits are too small. So anyway, um, just wrapping up some kind of lights here for this umbrella. Um, it did, if you notice right here, I noticed I tilted the, um, brackets or the support brackets the wrong way, but kind of a happy accident because I actually really like... The way that it turned out as they hang from the tip of the umbrella up inside um, and go on the underneath of the brackets it gives it a really nice um, kind of indirect lighting look to it rather than them hanging down um, it just it, they it really turned out cool and it looks awesome at night holy cow sorry <clears throat> anyway um so uh getting into so the fence build this fence build lasts for about uh it's about five minutes worth of the episode um, and this is the outer viewing area that looks right down on the, or right over that, uh, that kind of sloped area. Um, so I have these great, uh, like planter looking things on, uh, on clay pillars, um, really trying to stay with kind of African kind of Madagascar type theme, but, uh, you guys certainly bounce around. Um, again, I'll put the, uh, um, to the chapter markers in the description so you can pick out the parts you want, um, just to repeat them. Uh, roughly, you're getting uh, kind of the outer boundary, obviously, which we already went through. Then we go through prop builds. You guys, by this point, if you're still listening, you saw that as well. Um, later, uh, we do the fence here at about the 14-minute mark. Um, go into uh, all, most of the rock work happens right after this, and then there's a bridge build right after that uh, for the inside of this exhibit. Um, the actual the foul point structure, the Fort Manda structure, um, starts at right about the 30 minute mark 29 24 um, and then it, we do some more rocks and foliage take care of enrichment at the 36 minute mark do lots of the terrain modification you know add sand and, and gravel and rock and stuff uh, has about the 40 minutes and then go back in a little bit more enrichment do foliage at the 41 minute mark and then it's on to final touch textures and uh, we take care of all the uh, lighting and the effects at the end at about 45 minutes or so 47 minutes um, <clears throat> I did end up going back in holy cow I need more water <clears throat> excuse me it's very sorry uh, I do end up going back in and uh, adding a lot more lights and uh, some effects um, near the base of that that uh, Fort Manda structure since it's I have it sitting in the water we added lots of mist um, this thing looks great at night it's beautiful 
Um, and uh, so it just really turned out nice. So I hope you guys enjoy it. And, uh, you know, please subscribe. Um, and if anybody has any tips or pointers or anything I could have done better or different, uh, obviously, um, I'm fairly new at this, at Planet Coaster anyway. I played, or, uh, sorry, Planet Zoo anyway. I played Coaster for a little bit, but certainly not as adept at building these things as some of these guys that I watch that are just absolutely breathtaking in some of the stuff that they're building. So, um, get there eventually. I'll stick with it and keep making videos. Um, always have a lot of fun and uh, learn something new about every time. And I, there's a lot of characters that I still, uh, a lot of these guys that I still watch regularly uh, to try to pick up uh, hints and tips. So um, if there's any influences of theirs in here, certainly uh, I appreciate uh, them for passing on that info. So anyway, again, thanks. And uh, don't forget to subscribe and uh, lots of other stuff coming to the channel. So take care.